If you clicked on this video, you're most likely a junior or mid-level engineer who is wondering how they can take their game to the next level, how they can make their work worthy of being honored a senior title, or how you can test into a company at a senior level. In this video, we'll talk about what is a senior software engineer and how you can become a senior software engineer too. Hi, I'm Tony Casera, and I am a senior software engineer at Thrive Market. So now this word senior, senior gets thrown around a lot. And I think before we jump into how to become a senior software engineer, it's important that we talk about what exactly is a software engineer. So senior software engineer has a couple of different connotations. And so let's start by just focusing on that word senior. Now, in a more traditional sense in companies and in jobs, uh, a senior title means that you've been in that field, in that position for many years. In a lot of companies, this means upwards of five, 10, or even 15 years in the industry before you earn that senior title. Now, things are a little different. Things move faster in software engineering in general. It's probably why a lot of you join the industry, myself included. And a lot of times, years of experience don't translate to merit or the amount of work that you're actually capable of doing and contributing as a software engineer. Every company is a little different when it comes to what is a senior software engineer. So on the very bottom, you have a lot of companies that will give someone a senior title in lieu of pay or um, when they're really desperate to hire someone and the title is basically meaningless at that point. A lot of dev agencies and startups will give these titles out because their companies don't have a lot of uh, clout with their name. So it doesn't really carry when you go to another company um, and they'll just do that to kind of inflate your ego instead of paying you what you should be paid as a mid-level engineer. Um, or giving you the guidance you need to become a senior software engineer because they just don't have it. They don't have those kinds of engineers and they're allowing you to fill a space that they need to hire for, but they don't have the ability to pay for. So unfortunately, that's the bottom level. You don't want to be in this situation. If it seems like it's too good to be true when you get an offer for a title, um, it probably is. Don't be afraid to walk away from that. But uh, let's come back to more legitimate meanings of the term senior. Now, certain companies, especially here in Los Angeles, um, they expect a senior engineer to have at least 10 years of experience. And I can tell you specifically, when I interviewed at Hulu, uh, they told me that they uh, basically wouldn't even consider me for senior just based on years of experience alone, which I think is a huge uh, mistake and misnomer about senior software engineers. But that's their hiring practice, and it's really not up to me to decide how they hire. Um, but I think they're wrong. Uh, so anyhow, having 10 years of experience doesn't mean you're a senior software engineer. It means you've been doing software engineering for 10 years. I have known engineers who have five or six years of experience who uh, do not operate at a senior or lead level, but have the title because they've just been around long enough to get it through means of either, you know, not leaving a company or being in a place where they needed someone or just getting hired away at a level. Um, and so, again, senior does not always mean senior. It means maybe we didn't want you to leave the company. It means uh, we need to promote you here because if we don't, uh, we risk you leaving the company. Uh, it means you have found some political way to have clout here and the only way for us to deal with that is to make you senior. And then for other companies, uh, a senior software engineer is someone who just has fulfilled a set list of requirements at a company like Google or Facebook this means that you've worked on a large scale, high profile project that either got a lot of publicity for the company or raised the company's revenue significantly. And in which case there are political reasons for promoting you, which is to say that we need to recognize your work and also do our best to maintain you as an employee here because it means a lot to the company that you've done this for us. Um, and so that's maybe a little bit more in a bigger company how it goes. So we've talked about from the lens of a company what a senior software engineer is. Let's talk about it from the point of the engineer. So a senior software engineer is not someone who necessarily knows 10 languages, um, is great at all areas of the stack, uh, and magically picks up new languages or frameworks with ease. Um, a senior software engineer has the same difficulties working across the stack as any other engineer. They're not gonna know everything, although they may have a wider breadth of knowledge and more tools at their disposal to understand problems and work with them more quickly. They still struggle with documentation and learning new frameworks and getting through uh, difficult problems and bugs that sometimes are just not well documented, so it's hard to know. Uh, but again, they've developed tools and practices that allow them to figure out how to get through these. So a senior software engineer in comparison to say a mid-level engineer 
is someone who's probably very quick to respond when a production bug is present. Um, they're usually very quick in identifying what part of the stack that bug is coming from. And if they aren't personally able to solve it, they're typically able to point towards the correct person or team that can. And again, this comes down to knowing where your strengths and weaknesses are. And as a senior software engineer, being able to delegate where you need to and forcing yourself to learn and overcome where else you can't. And this in itself is a very important skill that goes outside of engineering. I think senior in a lot of different roles outside of software engineering requires you to know how to manage your own work, know your own limitations and know the limitations of others. And so again, a senior software engineer is someone who doesn't necessarily get more work done than other people, though typically they are operating at a higher level than a junior or mid uh, level engineer. They're ones who know how to manage others, manage the workload of their team, and also help others when they're stuck, uh, as well as being able to communicate with non-technical stakeholders, as well as setting timelines, delivering on those timelines, and being able to uh, be responsible and accountable for their work if things don't go correctly. Uh, there's always going to be unforeseen things in our work as software engineers, and a part of a senior software engineer's uh, responsibilities are also to make sure that those unforeseen parts are taken care of and accounted for uh, when we're determining how long it's going to take to make something. We've talked about sort of what a senior software engineer is. They aren't necessarily that much more of a better engineer than a mid or junior level, but they have skills and patterns in place that allow them to uh, more easily work through or around problems that they have instead of getting stuck. But let's talk about how you become a senior software engineer. There's no one way to do it. There's the way that I did it, and then there's the way that I've seen other people do it as well. So let's start with the way that I've seen other people do it. So when I graduated from my code school over three years ago, um, I saw someone go straight into a senior software job who had never had a software engineering job before, um, had only minimally studied leak code problems, and just by some sort of crazy chance, got the right questions that they knew the answers to, uh, were able to come off as knowing everything, and we're given a senior title. And I can't tell you any of the details that go into that because I just don't know. I have to gather that possibly they needed to fill that position quickly. Maybe that person fulfilled a certain personality trait that someone was looking for. Um, or it could just be a gut feeling. Maybe the person was attracted to that person or reminded them of a friend or family member and they just happen to really trust them. Life is so irrational and hard to predict that these things just happen sometimes and there's no explanation for them. I'm so happy for that person because they were able to go in and really run, hit the ground. Sorry, they were able to go in and really hit the ground running. Um, so they were able to succeed, but not everyone will have that opportunity. The next way that I've seen people getting promoted to senior software engineer titles is they go to another company. Uh, oftentimes when people interview at a fang company, that's Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, um, or they're just looking for another job in general, part of that offer that makes it sweet for them to leave the company is that they get offered a senior title in addition to a pay raise or something else. Um, and so that's often a common way of going to another company uh, to become a senior software engineer. And then finally, there's the way that, that I became a senior software engineer. Um, and the way that I assume probably most people do um, which is that I stayed at a company long enough and delivered a lot of really beneficial work that increased uh, the company's revenue and output significantly uh, and got a promotion because of it. We'll talk a little bit more about my story now, which is that three years ago, I started being a software engineer out of boot camp at a company called Veris in Orange County. They hired me at a mid-level when, let's be honest, I was a junior, um, and they offered me 90000 a year, which was very generous at the time. Uh, I stayed there for a year before moving to Thrive Market, where I was again hired as a mid-level. I received a $20,000 raise, and I worked there for a year where I was hoping to become a senior engineer. And along the way, my manager at the time, who I had built a good rapport with, I had built a good um, uh, line of credibility with, he decided to leave the company. And another manager came in and replaced him, and I kind of lost all the momentum I had been building towards getting the senior promotion. So I kind of set back my plans by a year, but in retrospect, I think it's the best thing that could have happened to me. I really don't think I was ready to be a senior engineer back then. If I would have been a senior engineer, it probably would have been because I would be doing things like threatening to leave the company or something else and getting a title bump. 
uh, you know, in exchange to not leave, or if I had a competing offer, something like that. And now we can get into the whole thing about how business is business and to not make things personal. But at the same time, if you are trying to win over your manager to give you a promotion, doing things like that typically don't make them like you more. So yes, while it is strictly business, there is also a personal aspect to business that we have to respect and know that the people we work with are human beings too, with feelings and emotions and difficulties and their own bosses and their own problems. So we should try to make life better for them. Now, when this new manager started, I basically had to rebuild all my karma, my credibility, my momentum again, working towards that senior title. And in the first six months, things weren't so great. I was on a team. Uh, there were a lot of things that really didn't go well. Um, I worked very hard, uh, but a lot of times things weren't planned well that were out of my grasp because I wasn't given uh, the responsibility of delivering that information. And unfortunately, the blame was passed on me for a lot of things that didn't get done on time, even though I had originally said they can't be done in that time. Uh, so fast forward a couple months, I get moved to another team. And this ends up being the thing that completely changes my trajectory because I'm on a team now where I get along with my teammates. I'm finally working on a project that um, adds a lot of business value to the company as well as requires a very thoughtful hand in the way that the work is done and a lot of careful planning. And I was given those responsibilities instead of someone else being given them and then expecting me to act on their will. So when this happened, things just changed immediately. I was getting a lot more work done. I was able to have teammates who were really happy, who were um, pleased with the work that I was doing, who wanted to speak up about me and to my manager and other upper management. And this started to reflect on me uh, when people started to realize that the work I was doing had huge benefits to the company. Fast forward another three months, uh, we have performance reviews at my company twice a year. And I get my performance review with my manager and it really showed because my manager came in and said, Tony, I'm really impressed with the work that you've done this quarter. I've seen a huge difference, not only in your work, but in the work of those around you and the things that people have to say about you. Uh, are just so, so good, um, I'm putting in a promotion for you. And two weeks later, I was promoted. And it was, it was a really, honestly, really touching uh, experience to see all my hard work over two years, me working towards the senior title, finally pay off. Um, I think the thing that really made the difference was when I stopped trying so hard to be a senior engineer in terms of like, hey, I deserve that promotion versus actually acting like a senior engineer and understanding that just because you act as a senior engineer doesn't mean that you're entitled to a promotion right away. It could take months, maybe even years to be recognized. And unfortunately, when you work for someone else, that is not up to you to decide when that happens. Unfortunately, that is up to them. So if you lower your expectations, if you understand that you're going to operate at this level because that is what you know you are personally capable of and the level of work you want to exhibit, the rest tends to follow later on. Uh, let me know what else you want to hear about. Again, leave me a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.